Hello and welcome to another fun-filled episode of the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us for a half an hour's worth of discussion uh, of the great issues facing us, uh, discussed by four highly intelligent people who are, are <laughs> happy to share their thoughts. We only, have guests. <laughs> oh, <laughs> only too happy to share their thoughts. Um, I, to introduce our, our guests or our fellow travelers here today, Cal Potter, former state senator and assistant superintendent uh, for library services with the Department of Public Instruction and now retired and having way too much fun. <laughs> Tom Paneski is a professor of mathematics at UW Sheboygan, working hard. Ken Risto, the king of the social studies empire of the Sheboygan Area School District and a teacher. <laughs> My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm a lawyer in town. And uh, we're uh, uh, gathering today, this afternoon, uh, whenever this is played, uh, to talk a little bit about issues uh, in the state and there's been a lot going on. It, it, it's beginning to, to feel like an election year is, yes, is beginning is. to creep in. Mm -hmm. And we have the, um, well, it's a little cynical, isn't it? But do you think that maybe just a few of the things that our legislature is devo voting its time to might just be election year issues? How about gas tax indexing? Um, it's my understanding that that has passed, is it both, both houses? Well, I believe as we are taping, we are having action in the assembly. Okay. Yeah, I, so we would know this very week, and when this airs, we'd, we'd have a decision. Right. I'm sure it's going to pass. It's, of course. I mean, both houses are conservative, and both houses have taken a posture that this is an evil tax. One of the interesting things is uh, I was in the legislature when we enacted this, and, and one of the reasons it was enacted is because nobody would vote for a gas tax increase. So you have all these legislators <laughs> complaining about their project never being funded, and we had this long waiting list of 20 years before your project was going to be uh, undertaken. And uh, the rationale, of course, was that things like the income tax or sales tax naturally go up because of inflation or people getting a raise. You go in a higher income tax bracket. The gas tax is one of those flat taxes that uh, isn't, a, isn't a percentage. It's, a per, it's so many cents per gallon as stipulated in the statutes. Right. This was indexed based on the cost of uh, highway repair and construction. Yeah. And so every six months or so it would go up about a half a penny. And it worked well now for maybe 20 years but uh, we're seeing the legislature getting on their high horse and saying this is an evil, but it's going to be interesting to see how many projects are not funded because I, I'd be willing to bet that if this conservative group who's repealing this automatic index uh, is still in power, they're going to be very reluctant to raise any type of uh, tax, whether it's gas tax or whatever. Oh, I, I mean, I think it, it, it kind of sets in stone the fact that there will be yeah. no money for highway construction from from an increase at least the, yeah. and and uh, and Governor Thompson never met a highway project he didn't like um, uh, highways and in uh, road construction certainly prospered in the 16 years of the Thompson administration and uh, we here in Sheboygan County are, have some lively interest in the four laning as it were of, of Highway 23. And well, see, I can't argue about what they're doing. I'm glad they're doing it. It's the, the argument is no taxation without representation. So all those people involved a few years ago, they decided to do this, so they never had to vote anymore. No, well, that's now, true. And so now we're just saying, if you need a highway project, and Sheboygan needs a highway project, then maybe... Then let's make then sure. Then vote on a gas tax increase. Yeah, that disabled but, adults don't have places to live <laughs> because vote we on need a to. Gas tax. I think that's just, even that was pretty basic, I thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard not to, fo to uh, follow that argument. Yeah. What's interesting is the uh, Republicans uh, generally have been very close to the road builders as an industry. That's correct. And, yes. uh, that's why Tommy <clears throat> Thompson was a, exactly. was a good supporter. And uh, as a result, even when Republicans for the last number of years here have had control at least of one house, they haven't touched this. So it kind of really shows how far to the conservative uh, move both houses of the state legislature have gone. But well, it's, al it's, also how about uh, it's also interesting how talk radio has really influenced this one because True. Mark Belling made that a, a major project of his. He got on the phone, got people calling their senators. I mean, he, for the whole week or two weeks, that was a major thrust of his uh, talk show. So uh, legislators are responding to 
talk show hosts. Talk show they hosts get getting people to constituting, activating the con constituency. And that's a constituency and listens to Mark Bell. And informing the people I mean, what's out there. And I, don't, the I wouldn't play his program in the barn, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, he, it's, uh, it was a major project of his. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could, be people called. you could be cynical here and say that some of the plan might have been to repeal it with the idea that the governor may veto it. He has not, I, I haven't seen that the governor oh, yeah. said what he is going to do about this. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we talked in your initial comments about, uh, uh, well, we'll get into the, the gay marriage issue and others that are coming up as a prelude to confront, confrontational issues that could be used in the next election. This could be one. If the governor would That's veto true. this, would veto I think it, yeah. Tom's populist view here, yes, yes. No taxes without <laughs> representation is, would play well uh, in a campaign period. Well, maybe next time we can just do a little research and see where the money is and see where the road builders have been putting their money and to see how, in fact, uh, either the governor or um, candidates for governor or members of the legislature respond based on that. Um, because I think you really, in these circumstances, have to follow the money to really get a sense of, of well, I mean, that, I, I make well, a straight line connection between the money and the action. Well, and if I understand, yeah, money and the action. But if I understand this year's budget, money came from the transportation fund to schools, to the general fund to the schools. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my, my question I was going to ask. Is how much <laughs> yeah. of this is just a straightforward political payback? Where you've, you've, essentially what you've done is you've, from the Republican point of view, you've raided, you've raided this trust fund that was set aside for road construction to support public schools. You know, and we'll fix your clock. Yeah, we'll fix and we'll fix your clock. Well, by making sure that that, that pile of money is yeah. is no longer available for you to use. Sure, that could be a that could be. Could be the and other, that's how I looked at it like when I read the newspapers. The, the politics that could be involved. Right. Now, your point about how much money is involved. You know, one of the things is that the, the legislature today is through reapportionment more solidly one party than it's it has been in a way of competitiveness. And as a result, you may see that that money is not as important anymore because of the safety of the districts that That's these true. birds come from. And as a result, they're reacting to the constituency of the Bellings and the Sykes and the shows that uh, play well in suburban Milwaukee where a lot of Republican votes come from. So the constituency numbers might be more important than the, the road builders' dollars today. So political ger gerrymandering as a solution to campaign finance reform, I mean, it's... It's a thing of beauty. <laughs> I, well, we keep coming back to that time after time after time is the lack of competitiveness, uh, yes. competitiveness of these districts. Um, how much is it, it's indexed to construction costs? You know, there must be some sort of an index yeah, of highway construction. So how, is, how fast is that tracking compared to, say, the you know, consumer price index? Or I mean, is, well, I think the track record has been about a half a penny every six months or so has been the increase. It is 33 cents a gallon currently. Mm -hmm. I, I think I heard that. Yeah, well, that one of the highest states in, in the nation, which is, adds fuel <coughs> to the fire to repeal this thing. But the fact of the matter is uh, many states have high fees. For example, uh, California, well, many states, you license your car, you're paying Two, three hundred dollars. Sometimes it's based on the value no, of the car. Six hundred dollars. Um, yeah, it's it's a personal property type thing where yeah. you have a Cadillac, of course, or yeah. a Lexus. You pay more than a Chevy. Um, other states, it's just a, a flat fee, but it's higher. We mm -hmm. have basically had a philosophy in this state that we're going to hit people who use it their cars extensively and hit the tourist trade that comes to this state, particularly Illinois drivers uh, who would pay their gas tax here. And we garner some money for the upkeep of the roads since we don't have toll roads. Yeah. We made that decision, yeah, instead of you know, stopping right. traffic every five, six, seven, That's eight, right. ten miles and, and putting up a toll booth. Yeah. Which has been a very difficult yeah. way to keep up. As you know, Illinois went from yeah. 40 to 75 to I think a dollar <coughs> 40 or dollar yeah. 50 $1. within about a year and a half just trying to keep tabs on repairing those roads and having upkeep. But now you can get iPass, so you can just zoom through those toll booths. And I sometimes want to just get one of those cards for the thrill of going through the toll booth. At, it's supposed to be, you know, five miles an hour, but, uh, you know, people tend to, to kind of whiz through a little, a little quicker than that. But um, other issues that, uh, that the legislature is, is attacking with uh, gusto. Um, concealed carry has come back, reared uh, from my perspective. Time, it's it, it's ugly years. head so that um, citizens can carry concealed weapons um, with a license and in many places but not uh, churches, uh, daycare centers, and police stations. Now here's my deal. 
How about taverns? Yeah. No, I... I, I don't know. I'm serious. I'm not being glib here. Yeah. No, no I think taverns I are fine. I think taverns are... I think schools, cool. but schools already have their bans. All right. Here's hmm. my deal, though, on the police station. Who's better suited to deal with somebody who has a weapon than a police officer? These guys have got bulletproof vests. <laughs> They've got their own guns. It seems to me that the one place you should be able to carry a weapon is in a... Sorry. I just, <laughs> I just had to bring that up. I... <laughs> Well, this is a good issue that I mean, uh, conservatives are getting getting set to do two things. One, they're paying off the NRA and the gun lobby for their good support in past elections. And the other is that we know the governor's going to veto this, this bad piece of legislation, and he's done so twice or once before. He'll do it again. And, of course, in November of next year, you'll have all those who uh, support this uh, and see this as the lifeblood of the... American democracy, uh, they go after the governor for his second veto on, on, the, on the matter. But it's a double-edged sword because, I, I mean, there are a lot of people who don't support it, um, just citizens. Uh, the poll numbers that I read indicate that, by and large, the citizens mm -hmm. of the state are not in favor of it. Certainly law enforcement has, at least in the first round, I'm not so sure in the second round, came out almost uniformly against concealed carry <clears> for, you know, many good, and even though they wear bulletproof vests, you know, they... Uh, I think they understand better than we do what, what carrying a gun is all about. Well, what's the argument for it? Second Amendment? Yeah. Defense. I think it's just playing on the fears of people that there's a, second, a criminal second around second every amendment. corner waiting to rob you and you need to have that yeah, criminal, firearm. Yeah, the, criminal, yeah, the criminal walks into a situation wondering, that's the, that's the argument. The criminal yeah. walks into a situation such as this studio, he, he or she does, he doesn't know that whether one of us is packing a six pack and can take him, be, take him down, you yeah, know, that's right. six shooter we'll, issues. We'll yeah. not I'm still thinking about taverns. <laughs> I, I can't imagine, I mean, I, I thought for sure they would ban taverns. I mean, this is Wisconsin for crying out loud. And I've tended, <laughs> I've tended bar and I don't want my, I don't want the clients. I mean, I'm allowed to use under Wisconsin law a certain amount of, a lot more force than the average citizen, you know, but. Uh, this has been a very successful is. movement by the gun lobby because oh, we're sure. one of the few states that now doesn't have it doesn't have it. That so law. It, it falls back on the right to bear arms. Yeah. Well, the, it's a measure of extent of the right to bear, bear arms. It you know, extends that right, and, yeah. is, and that's that's I would yeah. imagine part of the process. Plus, what is the understanding that more people are going to buy firearms once they are allowed to carry them concealed with a permit? I presume that that will be a certain industry yeah. point of view in, in a minor. I, I haven't had a chance to look at the statute. How much uh, latitude, I assume you're going to get your permit from your local police department? Yes. Uh, yeah. And there's training you have to and go through. And the original bill else. even had yeah. a time period through which through. the sheriff, under okay. which the sheriff had to proceed to, to give you this uh, permit. It was like 30 days or something rather short. And the sheriffs were saying, there's no way we can do a national felon search even on some of these birds without, uh, and during that period of time. Does the statute say will or may? I think it was will. Will. Yeah. Well, that was that was the original bill. Now this right. has been modified somewhat. I don't. I can't speak what it is now. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. think there's a lot of opposition to the law on both sides of the fence, and that it's not a clear mm -hmm. political winner. It is. You know, I mean, if 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 you're beholden to the NRA or to other members of the gun lobby, but. I, I think it's I think it's it's a difficult uh, issue, and I, that one I'm pretty sure I, I can't un, I can't foresee the circumstances under which Doyle would not veto it again, and I'm not so sure that will necessarily hurt. And he's going to do it with 65 police chiefs surrounding him. Yeah, sure. I mean, that you know, if you want to look like a law and order governor, uh, you want to support your local police departments. I mean, I'd veto that thing in five seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to say, I got all these police chiefs who are telling me this is going to make the, their job that much tougher. Yeah. Uh, I think I think this is. Every county has a sheriff, so we have 72 mm -hmm. sheriffs, and uh, I think yeah. a goodly percentage. Uh, so, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens. There isn't a single police officer, and I've talked about me 10 or 11 of them in Sheboygan. It's hardly, you know, I don't know, a representative sample, but none of them are comfortable with the idea of the citizenry walking around and wondering whether they've got a gun or not. Well, you read all the letters and it says, oh, these people are going to be highly trained and screened, but, you know, you know if you look at the population out there, there's a certain percentage that are mentally ill, there's a certain percentage of population that are drug-dependent and alcoholic, and, you know, you're going to get people who are going to pass the muster of being able to yeah. carry the gun who probably shouldn't be, and sure. I think the, the police officers, knowing what the variety of people they deal exactly. with on a daily basis, if they're going to have more people carrying guns uh, simply because they made it easier, it's not a pleasant situation for them.
I mean, the, I know people will carry and continue to carry guns and conceal them, but at least now you've taken one more weapon away from the police. The police oftentimes get in a situation, you search, a reasonable search, and you find a gun, now we're off, you know, now you've got something at least to detain this person. I mean, yeah, I, I, right? I, I think it is difficult, and I, and I would certainly understand law enforcement opposition to it. So what do you think, Tom? Are uh, you a Second Amendment? Or? I, I'll go with the Second Amendment. <laughs> this, this issue is always I mean, there's a lot of training. It's not just anybody right. gets a gun. <clears throat> You've got to purchase a gun. You've got to go through a lot of training, training safety and things like that. That's part of the process. At least that's how it's supposedly done. Mm -hmm. And, if, and to, bear, to bear an arm, or if I don't have guns. I've, I never have guns. But I think uh, those who like guns, those, I know a lot of people who are hunters. They love guns. They go out and, you know, they turkey mm -hmm. hunt and deer hunt and everything else, duck hunt, uh, they feel it's their right. And it is. I mean, and, you know, and, yeah, absolutely. When yeah. I was in the legislature, I, there was never a, time, never a bill that I saw that prevented anybody from having a gun to hunt. And, yeah. uh, oh, know, we or, just... or having one in, in your dresser drawer at home, yeah. waiting for that burglar to come through your bedroom window so you can blow their head off. You know, you, yeah. you have a, you have a right to do that in your home. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's a matter here of a new, home is his castle. It's, it's it's the next step of do you want this person in a supermarket packing packing their forty five and, yeah. and for what reason I guess and the, the, the rightist would say the Second Amendment gives you that right to protect yourself and anyone else who ends up in trouble, and that's part of the whole Second Amendment. And a police officer would say, well, there is a point at which uh, the Second Amendment gives you the right to have a firearm, but in some places maybe you shouldn't. Well, and we just passed, not just, but in the, the last couple of voting cycles, an amendment guaranteeing the right to hunt and fish. And I think that was really to shore up any question that there might have been in anybody's mind that, that people not that can... that there ever was. I, I can't, uh, there certainly wasn't, uh, uh, you know, we aren't going to let people deer hunt. I, you know, I, did, I didn't see that as a, as a pressing issue, but in any event, that, that amendment passed handily, if I remember, with about 80% of yeah, the vote. Well, and uh, mm -hmm. um, so, and, and those fisher people, you know, they can be dangerous. <laughs> Hook in the nose, and, 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 and there's some pain involved, no question Boy, about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think that was a concern about the DNR passing, you know, yeah, really know. stringent regulations that would allow people. Well, yeah. animal rights people, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. there, there are people who are afraid that uh, there's going to be a movement from protecting mink and others that they, uh, into mm -hmm. then stopping the deer hunt or whatever type of other hunting there might be. Even I. I know PETA's <laughs> <he's> got a <laughs> substantial <laughs> constituency here in the, in, in the state of Wisconsin. Uh -huh. Well, no, we, we depend on yeah, our friends for venison, uh, <laughs> and so, uh, which is a fine dish. So, uh, and and if, uh, venison and fish. So I, uh, I I have no problem with that. Um, let's move on to gay marriage. You know, this is another not controversial issue. <laughs> and we'll be voting on that in November, by the way. This is out of the. No, well, this is out of I you know. Say. Yep. Carl, I didn't expose anybody. You know, uh, yeah. um, Carl Rove's playbook. Uh, that's right. Clearly, that's what's going on here. Uh, is we're going to try to see if we can turn out the base on this issue. Uh, but that being said, I mean, my my view, and we've talked about this earlier, is I, I think the state should get out of the institution of marriage altogether. I think the state understand there's a reasonable state position that says we want to have monogamous, stable monogamous uh, relationships of one kind or another. It isn't our job to decide what the religious uh, basis of these unions should be. I, I, I think to go in the other direction, I think we should change the, take the word marriage out of the United States, out of the Wisconsin statutes. Just simply talk about civil unions and heterosexuals can have them, homosexuals can have them, with all the rights and privileges that go with it. And then if one wants to have it, you know, some sort of religious covenant between one's partner, then go find yourself a minister, rabbi, you know, imam or whatever it might be and have a second <laughs> ceremony. A friend of mine has done that. They had a civil marriage uh, uh, in, in Florida at the time, so Caesar had his day. Uh, and his say in the matter, and then they went and turned to their local UCC minister to have this religious covenant, and let the, and let the religious religious denominations, you know, do the theology rather than the state government. Mm -hmm. uh, that day is never going to come, of course. But that would be that would be this man's minority position on the on the topic. Well, I think we're going the other direction. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's an interesting. I mean, if you're going to have it, I think <clears throat> marriage ought to be explicitly defined because people interpret it 
all sorts of ways. I like the idea of the traditional, keep the definition and very clear, very exact. If you want to call relationships between uh, gays and other kinds of relationships uh, something else, call them, you know, fine, but keep marriage well defined. We keep changing words and terminology. But actually, that's an interesting comment. Just take it out of the out of the discussion altogether. It recognizes the separation of church and state, and it says <clears throat> that marriage is fundamentally, uh, what we consider marriage, is fundamentally a religious concept. Because the state statute simply says, as you know, is it, it's just a contract. It's nothing more, nothing exactly. less. There's no theological religious component to, and the to the of state view. Uh, you know, and it's entirely secular, as well it should be. Mm -hmm. And so let's call it that and say it's secular, and then let's have the discussion of do we want to have certain, do we want to provide the same sort of legal protections uh, for committed homosexual couples as we do for heterosexual couples? And if we do, then fine, let's, let's sanction both types of, of, both types of contracts mm -hmm. and let the churches fight it out. What's particularly distasteful about this whole thing is the uh, speed at which they're trying to uh, pass it in order to get it on the ballot, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, for the November election. Um, I think you're taking a population which can be anywhere from 5 to 10 percent of the population and using them for political purposes. And the gay and lesbian population has enough to contend with in their lives uh, without having politicians uh, starting to use them in some way that I think this is just completely distasteful. Well, someone has characterized all the, this whole piece as, as the last civil rights issue, the last civil rights constituency. And when you think of how long it took just the basic concept for women to get the vote, starting in um, the, 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 the first convention in, in New York in 18... 76 or the Seneca Convention? Yeah, yeah Something like that. in Seneca Falls, and uh, to the, the, the final amendment, which was passed in... Um, 1919, I think. Right at the That's end why we need a social uh, studies uh, guy here, right here. Yeah, right on camera. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. getting my U.S. history test All right. right here. Uh, <laughs> 50 years. 50 years for a concept now that is so without even considering. Uh, I, I mean, it just it's a question of how long it takes society to evolve. And for and, and a hundred years for African Americans. I mean, to really to make the the thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth amendments actually exactly. to be at least legally recognized as being yeah. enforceable so, in the South. So I think we're sort of just at the beginning of a of a civil rights movement that, if history teaches any uh, teaches us anything, will take many, many, many years. And and people who feel they don't have the full range of civil <coughs> rights are impatient. And mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be. It will be interesting, but it's a it's an easy political it's an easy political matter, and um, you know heterosexuals don't really do all that well in marriage since about fifty percent yeah. of those marriages end in 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 divorce. And if I guess I don't see the point of if you have people who are willing to enter into stable relationships, why we shouldn't why we shouldn't allow that and and long you know long term partners. And um, well, this yeah, one, yeah, amendment. Yeah, allow, uh, they could do it. We well, just don't call it marriage. That's all. But mm -hmm. this amendment goes beyond <laughs> the reference to marriage. I think it got into civil unions as well. Right. Oh, I think there is a tag on, yeah. Yes, well, and yeah. so here you're, t you're, you're going and really purging a group from even having an option, which I think is, you know, I could even concede for religious reasons you want to do what right. you want to do on marriage. Right. But let these folks, because of legal reasons and inheritance and custodies and all kinds of other things Medical have defense. some type of uh, civil recognition because today more and more companies even under the fire that they get from the extreme conservatives are offering benefits to couples of the that's, same sex. Absolutely, I mean, because it's, yeah. it, it I really is a sensible way to well, approach And you things. know how that plays out. I think the reason why they went in that direction was there was a fear that if you, uh, I mean, some people would be opposed even to the recognition of civil unions for, for theological reasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think some of people are concerned that if one creates civil unions, then what will happen is there will inevitably be an equal protection challenge under the National 14th Amendment. You've got marriages over here uh, for heterosexuals, and then you have civil unions for uh, homosexual couples. And, you know, there's a fear that then the 14th Amendment is going to come and, and overturn those, and, and, and like all of Massachusetts, force the state down the road of recognizing marriage as a homosexual institution as well as a heterosexual one. 
I don't know. I, first of all, given where the Supreme Court is going, I don't think we need to worry about that scenario playing <laughs> out. Um, <laughs> I think that, I mean, that would be yeah. fair to say. I think um, we've got about a 50, uh, yeah, 50 barring, year yeah, barring time this, limit there. Well, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't even know what, what, I can't even imagine mm -hmm. how that would change. I think there'd be a legal case to be made that says, you know, let's look at the actual benefits derived from marriage civilly under the law and uh, civil unions, and there, if there isn't any, you know, that's equal enough perhaps for the, for the oh, I think for a court, it's a rose by any other name. Well, let's uh, move on, but I don't want to move on without wishing Elton John the very best <laughs> in his new, <laughs> in his new uh, marital state, and I'm sure it will be quite the wedding. <laughs> well, what's his sexual orientation this week? Because, I mean, I've been following, I've been listening to Elton John <laughs> since 1970, and, and right. I've seen him, you know, playing both teams, so... I'm not quite sure, where is he this week? Yeah, well, in any event, okay. near the red piano. Um, Brian Burke's going to jail. Chuck Walla, Scott Jensen, Mr. Fody, Steve Fody. What are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, we're seeing convictions on all, all of these individuals. Uh, there are two of them that haven't been convicted yet, but I, I, I suspect there's going to be a conviction. It'll be a plea bargain on the part of Jensen and Fody and some type of uh, sentence held out. And I think uh, it's, it's the good that might come out of this will be that I think there is Senate Bill 1, which merges the Elections Board and the Ethics Board together, and hopefully we'll get some type of institution that monitors uh, this type of behavior with some teeth, and it becomes something where we go back to a clean operation in state government. These, I, I, can, I can say these probably were the poster children of past politicians who shook down a lot of people for money sure. and uh, it's just something that shouldn't be done and let's clean it up and move on but I think uh, you're seeing that what took place here was uh, something that got them in hot water and they're paying the price. Mm -hmm. Kelly you worked there. Um, <coughs> would the conviction, when the convictions themselves enough you know get people to you know have the fear of, fear of the Lord put in them or do we have to send some of these guys to jail for the rest of the capital to understand this is serious business? I think you get a period of time where people are clean and they'll you know, start going to the local tavern or something and doing the shakedown. It won't be on phones and legislators' offices. Uh, but you know, if, if nothing is done to clean it up, I, you know, there's backsliding. Um, if you remember in the past, there used to be a, f a phone schedule, I think it was in a phone scandal way back in around 1980 where legislators were calling their kids in, in Timbuktu and whatever. And, and, posting it to the taxpayer's expense, and a lot of them were found guilty of misdemeanors and had to repay and so on. And that cleaned it up for a while. And here now you had people yeah. using the phones to solicit money. Well, it's been an interesting time, and we're all sending a wedding card to Elton John, and thank you for listening. <laughs>